My name is Errol Balmar, and I'd like to welcome you to Revival Tab's online campus experience. If this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you for coming. Our hope is that you will be empowered today. We want to connect you, so please go to RevivalTab.org and click the first time guest link. We are so excited to share with you our Reset series. We're hitting the reset button as a church family, and we invite you to share, repost, and invite someone on whatever online campus that you're attending. We want everyone to hear this life-changing message.
blessing is righteousness alone. All is to stand before the throne. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. All is before the throne. Yeah. Oh, the cornerstone where the weak made strong And the Savior's love and through the song He is Lord, He's Lord of all Christ alone, He's the cornerstone where the As you prepare to give, I want to share with you a great verse from the Bible that speaks about our approach to giving. In Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the writer Paul shares in his letters to the church in Corinth the following wisdom. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. See, the church in Corinth was preparing to send a financial gift to another church, and Paul was exhorting them to give cheerfully. Paul knew that a gift given reluctantly or under pressure wouldn't be given with the right spirit or heart. Isn't it wonderful when we can give and feel cheerful about it? Like think about, think about two children who are playing together. When one child hoards all of the toys and then you come along and you demand that they give one to the other child, they do so with a grudging spirit. Does that make you feel joyful? I don't think so. On the other hand, how do you feel when you see a child willingly and cheerfully give their toy to another child. Now that's a wonderful feeling. That's how God must feel when he sees us giving willingly and cheerfully. As we give today, let's give cheerfully as the Lord has led us. There are three ways to give at RT. Text 84321 with your dollar amount or go online to our online giving at revivaltab.org. Lastly, you can mail your giving to 16455 Woodward Avenue. It's Highland Park, Michigan, 48203. Thank you for giving generously to God's work here at Revival Tab. of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm never alone. 
you're a good, good father. It's who you are. Yes, it is. It's who you are. It's who you are. for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. Oh, it's who I am. And you're perfect in all of your ways. God, you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. As you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as Top of this year, I told you that our word for the year 
for 2021 is reset. We are allowing God to reset some important aspects of our Christian life. And here's the reason, so that we can grow properly, so, so that we can grow without deformities in our Christian walk. So we started the year off resetting our prayer life and didn't we enjoy the Reset Prayer Challenge and our 21 days of prayer and fasting? As a matter of fact, right now, let's give it up to our prayer leaders and the team. Thank you, Mother Goff and Sister Casey Shepherd, for leading us through that time so well. Last week, we kicked off our new series <laughs> entitled The God You See is the God You Get. And we talked about how we wrongly assume that God will protect us from suffering if we follow him with enough faith. And we were reset in our knowledge of knowing that God works in both miracles and sufferings to bring about his purpose and his plan in our lives. Well, this week we are touching on something that is super important. It's an important element as it relates to our relationship with God. So I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter six, and we're going to look at verse nine. Matthew chapter six, verse nine. Here's how it reads. This is how you should pray. Our father. I'm going to stop right there because that's what we're going to talk about today resetting our view of God as our Father. You know, many people have problems calling God Father because for them, Father is not a word of affection or intimacy, but rather stirs up memories of neglect, of desertion or abuse. So what is Jesus teaching us about God when he taught us to call him our father. Well, I believe that there are uh, several things that we need to understand as it relates to God being our father. So let's get after it, right? The first thing we need to understand is that he is a loving father. Calling God our father reminds us that we are his children. You see, we must trust Christ as our savior. We are born into the family of God and therefore can address him as father. Look at how 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 reminds us of God's love. It says this, see what great love the father has given us that we should be called God's children. You see, God's love or God loves us with the same love with, with which he loves his only son, Jesus. In Christ, we become the objects of God's affection. In his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before his arrest and crucifixion, Jesus prays, and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. John 17 and 26. This is because when we are born into the family of God, he never sees us outside of Christ. The phrase in Christ occurs more than 80 times in the New Testament. Therefore, we have to uh, be aware that we have this blessed assurance that even the Apostle Paul talks about in Romans 8 and 1 when he says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are what? what? There it is again, <laughs> in Christ Jesus. Because we are in Christ, he is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. And he is our redemption. Apart from Christ, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. But in Christ, we have his righteousness and his sanctification. That's the reason why God loves us with the same love that he has for Jesus 
and that there is no condemnation for us. It is only in Christ that God becomes the loving father. So resetting our view to know God as father includes realizing that he is a loving father. But not only is he a loving father, second, he is a correcting father. Mm, I told you, we're going to get after this today. Uh, see, because God loves you, he corrects you. Now, I know no one likes to be disciplined. Matter of fact, many people are living lives that are in a complete mess because they don't have the loving, firm discipline that all children sometimes need and that all loving parents give. I remember one time hanging out with a group of friends. Um, it was getting late and some of the people in the group, it was approaching their curfew time. And I remember one of my friends said, oh, let me call and check in with my father or else I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> Another one of my friends said, I wish there was someone who, called, who, who cared how late I stayed out. What they meant was they wish someone loved them enough to set boundaries for them and discipline them when they crossed one of those boundaries. You see, God loves us so much that he sets boundaries in our lives. And when we cross the line, he corrects us and disciplines us. Look at how the writer in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verses five and six describes this amazing truth about God's correction. It says, my son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves. You know, y'all know how I feel about dogs, but this is one thing I do know from the brief time that we had one. If you walk a dog on a leash and you come to a pole and the dog goes on one side of the pole and you go on the other side of the pole, you will both be stuck. And although both of you are going in the same direction, you will not be able to move forward. So you will have to back up and pull the dog in the opposite direction in order to get him going in the right way. You know, that's how it is with life. God will pull us back sometimes to move us forward. Whew, Lord, he'll, he'll, he'll jerk us back. And, and listen, he's not trying to be mean. He just is the one who knows how to get us going in the right direction. Sometimes we fail to live like his children, letting peer pressure, letting culture and all of our selfish desires lead us into compromise, lead us into hypocrisy and sin. And it's at those times that we will experience the divine discipline because watch this, our heavenly father disciplines his children. Job says it like this in the fifth chapter in the 17th verse, he says, how happy is the person whom God corrects. So do not reject the discipline of the almighty. So why should we be happy when God corrects us? Here it is, because it is a reminder that God loves us. Resetting our view of God as father means understanding he is not only a loving father, he is not only a correcting father, but thirdly, he is a caring father. <laughs> God disciplines us, watch this, 
because he cares what kind of people we are becoming. Furthermore, God cares about everything in our lives. That's why he wants us to pray and tell him all about our troubles. He is a caring father. He cares. The Bible tells us to cast our anxiety or our worries on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us. God cares about our discouragement. God cares about our loneliness. God cares about our problems. God cares about our financial stress. God cares about our pressures at work or at school. He cares about our, uh, 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 our health. God also cares about our well-being our, in our mind. God cares about everything. Psalm chapter 55, the 22nd verse, it says like this, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Hmm. God cares about your fears. God cares about your frustrations. But all God also cares about your failings. He cares about how you feel even right now. And because he cares, Jesus said, watch this, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Now, Jesus didn't say God knows how many hairs are on your head. He said the hairs on your head are all numbered. That means he knows where hair number 1,365 is on my head, and he knows where hair number three is on my head. Now, why would God want to know things like that about you and about me? because he cares about every aspect of our lives. He knows about every cell in your body and he knows about every hurt and pain because he cares about you. Resetting our view of God as father means understanding he is a loving father. He is a correcting father. He is a caring father. He is also a comforting father. See, when we are fearful, when we're frustrated, or even when we're hurting, we need someone who not only cares, but also can comfort us. And our heavenly father can comfort as no one else can because he is the God of of all comfort. Oh, bless your name, Lord. On January 10th, 2003, a young man named Terry Dreyer was in the water for about 20 hours after his boat capsized. He gave a valiant effort at survival, although he later confessed he felt certain that he was going to die. After that long while, a helicopter located him and sent word to a ship on its way the, to the Parisian Gulf. The name of the ship was the USS Comforter. This vessel, on its way to do battle, paused to deliver one man. They went out of their way to save one man, and there was a doctor on board who nursed him back to health. Now, Many people today are treading water. <laughs> they don't know how much longer they can hang in there. Maybe that's you right now. I come and let you know that people are tired and they feel lost. And all we must do is look up and see that our deliverer is hovering nearby. He knows exactly where deliverance can be found. 
the God of all comfort will make sure that the comfort we need comes our way. So, so how does God comfort us? Well, I believe that he does it in at least four primary ways. Number one, he comforts us with his promises. Did you know there are about 7,000 promises in the Bible? And that God has never broken one of them. Matter of fact, there is a perfectly matched promise for every problem that we will ever have. Psalm 119 verse 50 says it like this. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promises have given me life. Y'all need to write that down on some three by five cards and post it all around your house. This is my confidence that your promise has never let me down. Number two, he comforts us with his presence. The Bible tells us that the Lord will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. See, we can trust in the Lord's presence at all of life's problems. Now, don't take it just from me. Listen to how David talks about God's comfort by his presence in Psalm 23 and 4. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It didn't say that you were in the valley of death. It said that you were going through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, it's not it. It just cast an image that looks like it. <laughs> Lord help me. Uh, it's not death. It's just casting an image of the appearance of death. That thing that has been bothering you, that thing that has been trying to make you fear and believe that it's over. It doesn't even have form or shape. It's flat. <laughs> it's just casting an appearance of the real thing. But you can be encouraged today, my brother and my sister, because I got a word for you straight from my sixth grade science class. Yeah, 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 my sixth grade science class. Uh, the word for you today that is going to encourage you is this. Rejoice when you see the shadow of death. Because that is an indication that there is light somewhere nearby. Lord, I feel your presence even right now. I know the shadow might be scary right now, but keep on walking in the light. Keep on walking in that beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us. Lord, I feel like preaching today by day and by night because Jesus is the light of the world and he is right there with you. He comforts us with his promises. He comforts us with his presence, but he also comforts us with his people. One of the most difficult things in life is to have serious problems and feel that no one cares or understands. And there is no one with whom to share our hearts and our hurts with. But God doesn't comfort us just to make us feel better or to help us through our problems. The Apostle Paul says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, that he comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction. Whew, Lord have mercy. Our heavenly father wants us to be good stewards of our pain. We are to uh, be good stewards only if we let painful experiences equip us to comfort those who will go through similar experiences. Then we can comfort them with the same comfort that we have received from God himself. So he comforts us with his promises. Lord, thank you, Jesus. He comforts us with his promises.
present. He comforts us with his people. But you know how else he comforts us? He also comforts us with his purpose. God has a divine purpose. Watch this for every problem that he allows us to have. The Bible tells us, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to, watch this, his purpose, Romans 8 and 28. This means that God uses our problems and our pains to develop us according to his purpose purpose. God never wastes problems or hurt. Let me say that one more time. God never wastes a problem or a hurt. He has a divine purpose for allowing every one of them. What is his purpose for all of our problems? Well, let's look back down at Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Look at what it says for the answer. It says, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We must never forget that God is the potter and we are the clay. And he uses our problems and pain to shape us and make us more like Jesus. Our Heavenly Father comforts us with his promises. He comforts us with his presence. He comforts us with his people and he comforts us with his purpose. So let's review. Resetting our view of God as our Father requires that we understand that he is a loving Father. He is a correcting father. He is a caring father. He is a comforting father. But there's one more thing that I need you to know before I get out of here. Mm -hmm. The fifth thing is that he is a father, watch this, that we must emulate. Getting to know God means we understand what he expects of us. Our Heavenly Father wants to see a family likeness or resemblance to him in our lives. Therefore, God extends this invitation. I know some people call it a command, but I say it's an invitation in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, where he says, Be holy because I'm holy. That word holy is hagios in the Greek, and it means set apart or sacred. It is the idea of being different from the world. And if we emulate our Heavenly Father, our morals, our language, our attitude, and our actions are different from those of this sinful world. Because we are to resemble our Heavenly Father. Paul writes, be therefore followers of God in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. That word translated followers is the word from which we get our English word mimics. Then when people see our attitudes and our actions, they should see us mimicking God who has made himself known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Let me get out of here. When people look at our life, God wants them to see what your heavenly father is really like. That's why we emulate him. First John chapter four, verse 17 simply says this. It tells us that God's love is made complete in us and will have confidence on the day of judgment if something is true in our lives. And then look at what the very next thing says, because as he is, so also are we in this world. Well, I, I used to know an old preacher who would say, when I see you, I see Jesus. <laughs> Resetting our view of God 
means to know him as a loving father, to know him as a correcting father, to know him as a caring father, to know him as a comforting father, and also to recognize him as a father that we must emulate. You know, friends, if we don't reset our view of God in this way, then we will have a very limited and distorted view and relationship with God. Remember my illustration from last week of having to blow into those old video games. God is blowing into our hearts and our minds so that we can see him more clearly to love him more dearly and to follow him more nearly. God wants us to experience this life the way that he designed it. You don't have to wait till the sweet by and by to enjoy life. No, you can experience it and enjoy it right here, right now, by trusting him as your father. Now, you may not have had the best relationship with your father. And that's okay. Because God is not like man. He's better. Give him a try. Let trusting him as father be the best decision of your life. And it's not hard or complicated. Nope. It's rather simple to become a child of God. Having been... Uh, someone who has gone through the adoption process in my own life. Let me just tell you, that was a very clunky and complicated process, but becoming a child of God, being adopted into the family of God, this is not complicated. It is, this is not hard. It's as easy as your ABCs. A, admit, admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Simply put, admit that you need help. B, B, believe, believe that God sent his son to die for your sins and that he rose again on the third day and then making the decision to repent of those sins. Repent is just simply a fancy word for change. I'm going to change from what is wrong and begin doing what is right. And then C is simply confess, confess Jesus is Lord. What does that word Lord mean? It simply means that he is now the boss. He has the final say-so of the affairs of your life. Will you trust God to be your father today? Come on, if you're ready to make that step, if you're ready to make that decision for your life, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, thank you for giving me another chance. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I need help. And I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins and that on the third day he rose again with all power in his hands. I repent of those sins. I turn away from what was wrong and I turn to you. Today, I confess Jesus as Lord of my life and I vow to live for him the best that I can with the Holy Spirit as my helper for the rest of my days in Jesus name. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I am convinced with all that is within me that you are now born again. Yes, God is now your father. Jesus is your savior. Holy Spirit is your helper. And most importantly, heaven is now your home. Your eternity has been secure in the hand or I like the, the book of God. Your name is written. It's a wonderful thing. The Bible tells us that anyone that is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. Don't let anybody try to tell you about what you did yesterday. You've been made new in Christ Jesus. Congratulations for trusting God as your father and let him make all things new in your life. Well, until next time, go with God and he will go with you. My brother, my sister,
Be blessed. Well, good morning to you. We are so glad that you decided to join us today, right here at Revival Tabernacle. No matter if you've been here a billion times or this is your very first time joining us for a service, we're so thankful that you're here on this Sunday morning. My name is Pastor Max. I would like to give you a few announcements this Sunday morning. Have you thought to yourself during this pandemic, man, I really miss connecting with folks. Or, I don't know, maybe you've been thinking, oh, I just really wish I could learn more about the Bible, about God. I just need to grow a little deeper. If you are someone that has said either of those two things, and I feel like all of us could say the second one, we have the thing for you. Midweek Bible study is continuing to go strong. Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we jump on Zoom together. It's a bunch of awesome faces that you haven't seen, some that you have, and we get to share together and learn together in the Word of God. Let's raise believers here. So why don't you join us on Zoom? All of our information is on revivaltab.org. Do not miss this Wednesday. Might even want to bring a friend. 1205 The Remix. 1205 Live The Remix is live this past week. I hope you were able to join us on Facebook Live. We've been focusing on the whole person. Awesome time on Mental Health Mondays. We got to join Pastor Devin for Taste Bud Tuesdays. We had Brother Errol for Wellness Wednesdays. It's been a great week. If you want to join us and we need your insight and input, if you want to join us for 1205 The Remix, all you need to do is reach out to Pastor E. Eli at Eli Harrell at RevivalTab.org. Give him an email, but we especially need your help with Thankful Thursdays. If you're a little bit camera shy, you're like, ah, I don't want to film a video. I'm not looking to go live. I'm not really that tech savvy. Don't worry about it. What we need from you is just your testimony. We would love to share some testimonies during these Thankful Thursdays. Every Thursday, if you want to just type out your testimony and email it to Pastor Eli, he will read it and just be able to encourage the church body. We love hearing your testimony and you never know what your testimony might do to encourage someone else. So reach out to Pastor Eli today. If you have kids, I need you to listen up. And actually, even if you don't have kids, if you have grandkids, or if if you have neighbors that have kids, or that, that one house down the street, I know that they have a little one. If you know anybody with kids, you need to listen up to this. Because RT Kids is an absolutely amazing place for all students to come and have an absolute blast. Pastor Kyle loves hanging out with all of these amazing kids along with his team, and they're starting up their Zoom calls again. Their Zoom calls are a time to come on, have some fun, connect with some kids, learn about the Lord. Pastor Kyle and his team do an amazing job. So reach out to everyone you know that has kids because their Zoom calls are starting up this time again this Tuesday, this Tuesday, February 16th at 7 p.m. If you need more information, you can reach out to Pastor Kyle directly or you can search on the RT Kids page on RevivalTab.org. We'll see all of your kiddos on Tuesday night. Thank you so much for listening to these announcements. We love that you decide to spend your Sunday mornings with us. We love you. We're praying for you. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're so excited for you to have an amazing week, and we'll catch you here next Sunday.